Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Kathleen Skelton on the subject of New Age philosophies and God's truth. This session was recorded on the 24th of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. Okay, we're back from our break and we're going to uh, continue recording our personal feedback session for Kathy, Kathy in the USA, Kathy Skelton. So um, <laughs> let's proceed. Mm. Why do people in the spirit world believe in reincarnation and teach it if they never actually witness it firsthand? Well, the really good answer to that question was yesterday. So if, if she listens to both of our channelings yesterday, she'll mm -hmm. see very clearly why groups of spirits believe what they believe about reincarnation. So that was two mediumship sessions recorded on the 23rd of the 12th, 2015. Yes. Yeah. And those particular mediumship sessions, and particularly the first one, I think it was, uh, where... Yeah. Was it, yeah, I think it was the first one, wasn't it? Yeah. Where we discussed with a group of spirits who were headed by a woman named Cynthia or... Uh, or Oriana. Oriana. Yeah. And, and, you know, th that explained very clearly why those particular spirits believed in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. The darkness of their condition means that they cannot see the spirit body of children. And as a result, they try to force spirits who they can see into the bodies of children. Mm -hmm. And that causes the overcloaking of those particular children, unfortunately. And uh, also the degradation of the condition of the spirits yeah. so who, who try to do it, both the spirits who do it and also the spirits who try to assist them to do it. And, uh, but that is explained very well in that channeling. So my suggestion is to listen to that particular channeling. There's also another channeling that we did um, do you remember what year when we were in Brazil? Uh, yes, in 2000 and I think it was 12, yeah. uh, 2012 or August or July, August 2012. Again, I'll try and put the link to both yeah. of those channelings in this outline. And that was, so. uh, that was the channelings you did with regard to spirit influence, spirit possession influence. Yeah. We talked about in spirit Brazil. influence yeah. when we were in Brazil yeah. as a talk and then we actually channeled some spirits yeah. who, were, who were influencing people on earth yeah. and who believed in reincarnation. Yeah. We also channeled uh, uh, Chico Sh yeah, yeah, Javier, or whatever yeah, yeah. his name is, um, while we were there, and yeah. it's worth listening to that channeling. That was also that was on the channeling that was regarding reincarnation. Yeah. Uh, it was a it, it's a bit difficult to listen to if you're English because you've got to listen to the Portuguese translation. But sometimes that helps you a bit to pause a bit and go, Absorbed. what was just said? <laughs> yeah. I think there might actually be transcripts of those as well there are. that are fully in English, so you can read them if, yes. if it's off-putting to have the translation. Yes. We've already presented plenty of information that explains yeah. why spirits believe in reincarnation. Yeah. We also did a series, uh, or one talk in particular that wasn't complete, but in Sweden, where we discussed the subject of why people believe in reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And I think that was in 2013 or 12 as well, yeah. but I can't remember the exact date. But, um, but again, we discussed here. all yeah. the multitude of reasons why people on earth and in the spirit world believe in reincarnation. Yeah. It's yeah. not, reincarnation as it's believed on earth is not true. Yeah. And we are planning to do a full FAQ series on, on reincarnation and, and reincarnation. reincarnation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Why do spirits all say abortion is okay and that souls don't attach to the physical bodies until it is certain it will be born? Well, for a start, I have to disagree that all spirits say this. Mm -hmm. If you could channel any f an, a spirit who is in, on, in any condition, a good condition of love, none of them would say it. So, so the reality is no single spirit who, who knows what happens to aborted children would ever say it. So this indicates the fact that the majority of people who channel spirits on earth are actually in the same condition as the spirits on earth, which the law of attraction would actually stipulate, if you think about so, it. So sorry, the, the majority of spirits that are channeled through are people on earth... Are in the same condition yeah. as the people who are channeling them on earth. Wow. And, and the people who are channeling them on, on earth are just, uh, have, an, have a feeling that they want to get away with abortion. Yeah. And, the, and in reality is that there are millions and millions of abortions performed every year. In fact, more children die from abortion than die from any other cause mm -hmm. on the whole planet. Yeah. So, so 
Mo all of those spirits who pass over pass into dark condition and they all in try to influence the next generation of people justifying their own abortions mm -hmm. because they don't want to feel the sin. They don't want to look at the sin. And the people who channel these particular spirits on earth are also in the same condition where they want to justify abortion. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the only channelings that will be received about abortion will be about will be from people who have actually aborted children and who want to justify it yeah. because that's the general condition of the majority of people who channel such spirits mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. They want to also justify bad treatment of children or the abortion of children. It's quite an unpopular belief to believe on earth today by in humans that abortion is in sinful in any way. Well, there isn't there the right, what so-called right to choose movement, yeah. which is driven by some very, very dark spirits, basically giving, trying to help women have the right to murder their children. Mm -hmm. And, and those particular spirits who govern that particular, those particular movements have a personal vested interest mm -hmm. in stating such things because they do not wish to deal with their own guilt and shame mm -hmm. about their, uh, their own conduct and their own abortions. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, the majority of people who are channeled on earth, spirits who are channeled on earth, are spirits who agree with abortion. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it makes sense that the people on earth who are in a very similar condition who also agree with abortion will only channel those particular spirits. Yeah. The reality is if you could channel a celestial spirit, not a single celestial spirit would ever, ever indicate that abortion is acceptable. In fact, quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. so they, they would actually demonstrate the, the terrible condition, not only of the people who commit such abortions, because mm -hmm. they're, they're basically have are justifying a murder mm -hmm. but also the terrible condition of the people who are channeling such information from those spirits yeah and and really you are you also saying or what i'm also feeling from what you're saying is that it's quite it's almost it's very difficult for a spirit who wants to say that there is a problem with abortion and that there is a soul attached to that child that's being aborted if this if the medium on earth does not is completely closed and resistive to that concept not only that if the medium on earth wants the agreement or payment of people they're channeling for yeah then certainly that medium is definitely not going to channel anything that's yeah. negative that causes the person to walk away feeling angry or upset with the medium yeah. and therefore potentially not come again. Yeah. The, re the reality is most mediums on earth are already tainted with the information they transmit because they're doing it for money. Yeah. And when you do it for money, it introduces a whole lot of negative things that occur, including the attractions mm -hmm. that occur. And, and if you're doing it for money, you're doing it, you, it's like the average person, you know, the average advertiser wants to tell everybody that everybody's, everything's good, nothing's bad. Mm -hmm. The average person that sells you something wants to tell you that everything's good, nothing's bad. Well, most of these spirits are just selling you something. That's all they're doing. And they're with you, helping you earn an income while you're channeling because they get something out of it. They, they, they are selling you something and they get something in return. Mm -hmm. and, and any person who sells you something and gets something in return is basically already tainted mm -hmm. with the fact that there's a potential of them being unethical and immoral when mm -hmm. they do it. Yeah. And, and the reality is the majority of spirits who, who channel to this earth are unethical and un immoral mm -hmm. because they're in the same condition as the majority of people on earth mm -hmm. who are also eth unethical and immoral. Yeah. <laughs> so... You can't expect a higher truth. The principle is you cannot expect a higher truth to be channeled through a person in a lower condition. Mm. And most of the mediums who believe themselves to be in good condition are in terrible condition and, and becoming worse by the day. Every day they channel more misinformation and more untruth, mm. unfortunately. Mm. So while they prove the existence of the spirit world, which is one great thing, they are often in the process transmitting to earth huge amounts of untruth mm. via from spirits to people on earth and this for this they will bear the responsibility mm -hmm. they'll bear the responsibility of telling people on earth untruth mm -hmm. and there is a huge responsibility associated with that so so um, the main reason why spirits cannot channel anything of any <laughs> moral of any moral condition on the planet is those particular spirits who are channeling such information are in the same moral condition as the spirits they are attracting to speak mm -hmm. through them. And as a result, 
most of the time they will be telling people on earth only what they want to hear. Mm. That's all. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, even in Cassie's example that we've been going through, how she's basically come from an atheist background. She's had an abortion in the past, and yet she already felt that there was something very wrong. She yes. felt there was grief about it before she was even introduced to the to yes. the feeling that there might be an afterlife. She allowed the sensitivity of her soul mm -hmm. to be sensitive. She allowed herself to be sensitive emotionally to the act. Yeah. And and the majority of these spirits who are channeling that abortion is okay mm -hmm. do not themselves wish to be sensitive emotionally to their own acts of abortion. Yeah. And therefore they do not wish to see their own condition. And as a result, they are trying to say to people on earth, no, there's not a problem with it. All these children are fine. And while it is true that the children are fine now, as, as we channeled a few weeks ago, yeah. unfortunately not recorded, oh, which is my problem. So annoying. Um, yeah. the, they go, through, they go lot. through lots of trauma in yeah. order to become fine. Yeah, they are very loved, but there is no escaping the trauma that has happened through the abortion. They can That's only it. escape it through their emotional processing yes. of it. Yes, they, they, they're they not wiped clean of it. No. They're just provided with a lot of love and support to work through it. Correct. But it still exists. Exactly. Yeah. And they feel the attitude of their parents yeah. towards them, even for many long years afterwards. Yeah. And, uh, and this is a very difficult thing that the spirits who help these particular children need to help them with. And it's a very long process. Mm -hmm. Often we, we talk to a group of uh, miscarried children who for 30 years were yeah. still children because they were unable to grow past the fact that the emotions of coming from their mother, which caused their miscarriage, were so antagonistic to their own life and their own happiness mm -hmm. that they still couldn't believe, 30 years later believe that their mothers would feel that way about them. Yeah. So, so, you know, there are some very negative emotions that come from women towards children. And I, I cannot agree with any of the statements on earth that a mother's love is the most, <laughs> is the most loving thing that exists because I have seen billions, literally billions, of mothers treat their children so very badly. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I don't believe any gender has any um, monopoly, monopoly yeah. on love or unloving behavior. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and um, it's interesting that it, it, what I notice is that a lot of channeling, so-called channeling of high spirits that occurs on earth today is really done to meet the emotional addictions of the people that are receiving the channeling. So yes. by saying that, oh, it's all right, your baby's fine, there was no soul involved, really it's it's there to kind of damp down the emotional responses or the, the, the well, feelings it, of fear, sadness. Well, a lot of those spirits that are channeling that information don't even see the soul of the child. Mm. They, they, the, soul, the child is so bright yeah. that the spirit itself cannot even see the body, spirit body or the soul of the child. Yeah. So, when, so when the physical body of the child dies, mm -hmm. they don't see the spirit body leave it and they don't yeah. see the soul. They can't see the soul yeah. and they, they don't see the spirit body because the spirit body is too bright. Yeah. So, so, so some of those spirits may be well-intentioned even yeah. in, in stating Insane, these yeah. untruths to people mm -hmm. on earth. But because they don't know the truth themselves mm -hmm. and they wish to believe something that's false, mm -hmm. and they channel a whole heap of material to people on earth that is also false. Mm -hmm. to, to actually see what's going on, you need to see the brightness of a six-sphere spirit close to, uh, because a, a, a baby who dies in the womb is close to the brightness of a six-sphere spirit. Yeah. Now, the average spirit in the hells or in the first sphere and the second sphere and the third sphere and the fourth sphere can't mm -hmm. even see. Yeah the spirit body of a child. Yeah. So so naturally they're going to say, oh, there was no soul attached to that child. Mm. And it's not true. And in fact, many of them believe that the soul that's attached to a child is actually an overcloaking yeah. because they can see that. They can see the spirit who's attempting to overcloak, overcloak the, the child. child. Yeah. Because the spirit who's attempting to overcloak the child is in a dark condition. Yeah. And so they can see that. Yeah. And so they go, oh, there was a soul then. That's reincarnation. And that's yeah. reincarnation <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But the reality is there's a whole lot of misinterpretation from these spirits because they do not know the truth mm -hmm. and therefore cannot share it. Yeah. So, so the average spirit below the sixth sphere cannot see. A, the spirit body of a child, mm -hmm. of, a, of a newly incarnated child. They cannot even see it. Mm -hmm. right? So, of course, when that child is aborted, they're going to think there was no soul attached. Yeah. 
but there is a spirit body mm -hmm. and there is a soul attached to that child every single time. Yeah. And, that's, yeah. and, and so they're teaching an untruth. They're also doing it, as you pointed out, for emotional reasons for the people on earth. They're yeah. feeding the addictions of people on earth and also their own addictions. Many of the spirits channeling this information have aborted a child. Yes. And they wish to avoid. And the, they wish to avoid the penalties yeah. of, of such abortions. And they're earthbound mm -hmm. trying to avoid the penalty. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to convince other people that it's all okay. Mm. So there's many, again, many reasons why um, the information is not correctly channeled to earth through mediums. Mm. Many reasons why. Yeah. And it's interesting, again, that Kathy, who's obviously been exposed to this kind of channeling and now has found divine truth and... I get the sense she's not completely convinced that divine truth is the truth as yet, no. but she's obviously, because of her own sensitivity to what she did in having an abortion, she feels more that what we're saying is truthful, yeah. despite having been told something that is completely was false, designed yeah. to sort of allay her sense of guilt. Or yes. There are a lot of spirits that just go around uh, channeling to people on earth. Who, whose only purpose is to make everyone on Earth be a bit happier than they are. Because they think everyone should just be happy on Earth. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and they don't care what they say, no. as long as it makes you happy. As so they'll tell you an untruth <laughs> if it's going to make you happy. <laughs> they'll tell you anything. And isn't that, isn't that it's really... Um, it's just like a person on Earth. It's a demonstration. <laughs> People on Earth really value happiness above ethi ethics. ethics yeah. And they, they feel that anyone's suffering should be alleviated, even if it is at the expense of truth or ethics. And, and or, or, they, or, that it, or that they are suffering because of the law of compensation. They, they want to, them to ignore the law of compensation. Yeah, yeah. Which probably leads us to our next question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, why do spirits say that many deaths and illnesses are chosen ahead of time as lessons to learn from this life and that we choose our lives? Yeah, none of these things are true. Again, the, it's the same explanation I gave for the, uh, as for the previous question. Yeah. These spirits often believe it, but they do not know the truth. And they are often observing overcloakings occurring on on earth and so so yesterday for example there were by the time one child one person was 20 years of age they were already overcloaked by six spirits mm. now when that person dies all of those six spirits will arrive in the spirit world and all of them will say <laughs> what <laughs> they will all say all sorts of things about their experience yeah. of that overcloaking because most of them don't even know that that's that it's wrong to overcloak a person on earth yeah, they call it reincarnation they call it reincarnation yeah. So, so the reason why most of this untruth exists is because the spirits themselves have no idea what the truth is. Mm. And we did speak about this very topic of uh, the idea of reincarnation and choosing one's life a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, when we did a personal feedback session for a lady called Catherine Kent? Yes, we did it with Catherine Kent and also with uh, that other uh, lady too um, who was... There was another lady who, two days ago. Oh, yes. The channeling, the, the um, Jane feedback. Or Janie. Janie, yes. Janie. Yeah, yeah, so we've talked about this. So if, if, uh, I'll put the links in this outline yes, to those. If, so uh, so if, yeah. if Kathy listens to those two feedback sessions, yeah. then she'll have a very good idea why all of this occurs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the lack of logic in it. And, uh, not only yeah. the lack of logic in it, but, and the lack of love in it. Yeah. And, uh, but there is no truth in it. Yeah. And on top of that, it's what people want to believe, mm -hmm. and they want to believe it for l hundreds of different emotional reasons. Mm -hmm. And and just because you want to believe something, it doesn't make it true. Mm -hmm. And that applies whether you're a spirit or a person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's Thank plenty of goodness. spirits who just want to believe things because it's ha they, it makes them happy to do so, yeah. or in their own mind, yeah. happy to do so, yeah. when the reality is they're in a terribly dark condition, they're not aware of their surroundings. They're not aware of the poor condition of their own body. And they have no idea what the truth is. Mm. <coughs> yeah. Okay. People and spirit are just the same as people on earth. They'll give their opinion whether they know it or not, <laughs> whether they know it's true or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, Kathy goes on and she says these concepts, so she's referring to the concepts that, from her previous questions, which were about yep. the belief in reincarnation, uh, about aborted children not having a soul attached, and that death, uh, death, illness, 
and basically our, our whole lives are chosen for us for lessons that, by us for lessons we need to learn so these concepts are all mainstream spirit channeled information yes and even if these spirits don't have as much knowledge as one in the celestial spheres this information is so contrary to your teachings that it seems odd that they would be so far off the mark yes, especially this is, oh, this is something we need to answer straight away okay people on earth have no idea of the how wide the gulf is between a celestial spirit and a person who exists in the hells no idea the, the gulf is so great as 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 to be like for most people on earth it's unimaginably great the gulf between the two the two locations are so far removed from each other that it's no surprise to me whatsoever mm -hmm. that most of the things i am teaching have not made their way to the planet <laughs> right, bearing in mind that the influences that come on this planet are mostly from first fear or hell or or, or the hells or the earthbound condition most of these spirits have passed over without any knowledge they still have no knowledge and if she listens to most of the challenges we have done to almost every group of spirits she will be able to see that almost all of them have no knowledge whatsoever mm -hmm. about their own condition about what's really going on in their life and why it's happening mm -hmm. and, and that is no surprise to no. me at all <laughs> and also at some point in some <coughs> discussions you've talked about the law of rapport and the fact that most mediums are in the most rapport because of their poor spiritual condition the mm -hmm. medium's poor spiritual condition they're in most rapport with spirits who are in a poor condition themselves Correct. and so the majority of there's channel, a law that governs it yeah yeah mm -hmm. the law of rapport <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so if i can finish Kathy's sure. sentence so um, this inf this so she's saying um, just say the sentence again, these so. concepts are all mainstream spirit channeled information and even if these spirits don't have as much knowledge as one in the cel celestial spheres this information is so contrary to your teachings that it seems odd that they would be so far off the mark especially as they all espouse love as the main reason for everything as you do this is where we need to also see the distinction yes the majority of people on earth believe it's loving to withhold truth yeah. i do not the majority of people on earth believe it's loving to make a person's uh, sadness go away yeah. i do not the majority of people on earth believe it's loving to cheer people up i do not the majority of people believe on earth believe it's loving to lie under certain circumstances i do not so can you already see that my opinions are already far removed from the average person's belief on earth and your your uh <laughs> definition of love, love is, the love you espouse is very different from the way they're using the word it's love. so different as to be completely unimaginable like yes. it's, it's, uh, yeah. like there's no there's no correlation whatsoever yeah. so you can use the word love and i can use the word love and we mean two totally different things this is why they use the word love mm -hmm. while at the same time missing out all of what love is and this is why they don't know what love is and it's also why they channel a whole heap of material that is unloving and believe it to be loving right and so it's no surprise to me that these things are happening just because a person uses a word it does not mean they understand the meaning from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. So you can use the word divine truth. You can use the word divine love, God's love. You can use all this terminology you like. But at the end of the day, if you do not actually emotionally understand it mm -hmm. as God understands it, then you are teaching an untruth. Mm -hmm. And that truth will be completely, oftentimes, completely the opposite of what God's truth is about the same subject. Right. The majority of people on earth believe love is sacrifice. I do not. The major, you know, I could go on. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we've given a whole series of talks about what humankind's definition of love is. Yeah. If if you if you listen to that series of talks, you'll see what humankind's definition of love is and what my definition of love is completely the opposite. Yeah. So it is no surprise to me that all of these people who channel what she calls mainstream spiritual channel, which I would call 
hell based spiritual <laughs> channel, which is mainstream, unfortunately. Pseudo spiritual channel. Well, it's pseudo spiritual. It's not even it's not even reality. Mm -hmm. It's no wonder her husband disagrees with it, because mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> and and it's also not true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? It's, it's a not... whole heap of crap, yeah. to be blunt, that is given to earth from spirits who believe in it and who have no idea what love is and have no understanding of love at all. And the people they're channeling to also have no idea what love is mm -hmm. and, what, and, and have no understanding of love at all. And they both believe themselves to be loving at the same time. Yeah. Right. So it is no wonder, to, it's no surprise to me that they use the same terminology that I use while at the same time not understanding a word that I'm actually saying. Yeah. Which probably leads to the next question, Good. which is why do they have so much untruth, especially if you and others are teaching them otherwise? Well, this is, this is quite a simple answer to this question. A person believes what they are open to believe, what they wish to believe most of the time. Mm -hmm. Not many people have a strong desire to know God's truth. They only want to believe their own truth. And that's why the New Age circles are littered with this concept of it's my truth it's your truth you know we can have we different can all, truths okay and all these kind of concepts truth. which yep. are completely false from god's yep. perspective the new age movement is littered with it because everyone wants to believe their own truth mm -hmm. right so it is of no surprise then that they cannot accept gods yeah. no surprise whatsoever and my suggestion to you kathy is to not be surprised when you hear a whole heap of things that are completely opposite to what I'm saying, while at the same time people are espousing the love and truth. Mm. The reality is it's their truth and it's their version of love, which is not God's. Which in, when you say it's their truth, it's really their opinion, their it's, damaged it's not, opinion of what it's love dam is. Their yeah. damaged opinion is not yeah. even true most of the time. And particularly when it comes from spirits, a lot of it is accompanied by direct lies that the spirits know they are lying about many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, my feelings about truth and love are God's feelings about truth and love. That's what happens when you become at one with God. You, you become in harmony with God's viewpoint of love and truth. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. and, and on the earth, God's viewpoint of love and truth is not known. It is unknown. Right? And, and this is why we return to earth, because we could see it's unknown. Yeah. And, it, and, and unfortunately, it's now known in the spirit world, in the celestial spheres, but completely unknown on earth. And unfortunately, a lot of people and spirits are using the terminology of mm -hmm. truth mm -hmm. while at the same time knowing nothing about it. Yeah. And, and this is how spirits fool people on earth. Yeah. There are so many people on earth who are hearing this channeling of this kind of material and, and have no idea who they're hearing it from. They are people who are in a hellish condition and that's because their own condition is in a hellish condition and they're not able to connect with anybody higher mm -hmm. and they're not able to actually consistently, you know, connect with a person who's in a higher condition of morals or ethics or love. Mm -hmm. And as a result, completely unable to channel the material accurately or if it's accurate, completely unable to channel material that is actually based on God's definition of love and truth. Yeah. Yeah. And so even though, as Kathy says, like you're teaching them otherwise, a person can't be taught something unless they are emotionally <coughs> open to receiving it. No. And while uh, you're saying that these their people want to hold to on to their opinions, these damaged opinions, then then it doesn't matter what you say and how much teaching you do publicly and how much truth you actually speak, unless a person actually wants to receive truth and love, then it... it you could be talking to the wall with as much effect. Well, a lot of times I am. Yeah. You know, there, a lot of times I'm talking to an audience of 200 people and it's like talking to a brick wall. Yeah. It is. Because people want to retain their own definition of love and truth rather than accept God's. Mm -hmm. And so it is like talking to a brick wall. They, th they are all thinking at the time that they understand what I'm saying. Mm. And I, I can feel the majority have, have no idea what I'm talking about. No idea at all. Because their definition, it's like, it's like if I think I know what love is and you mention the word love, I'm going to believe it's my version of it. right? And unless I'm willing to accept God's version of it, I won't know any different. Yeah. And I'll, I'll think you and I are talking about the same thing when we're talking about something completely different. Yeah.
just from that one subject and and with regard to spiritual truth and with regard to all truth on the on the, in the universe there's an infinite amount of subjects <laughs> i'm going to do that with an infinite potentially an infinite amount of subjects if i want to hold on to my own opinion the key with progressing on the path to divine truth of divine truth is to forget about your own opinions and be sensitive enough to feel god's opinion that's the key the majority of people on this planet are not in that position where they even desire to know what God's opinion is, let alone uh, express it or t teach it to others. Yeah. And that's a big problem. That's why we returned. Mm -hmm. If there was somebody here on earth doing it, we wouldn't have even returned mm -hmm. because there's no point in returning if somebody was already teaching the truth. Yeah. 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 So the whole reason why we returned is, yes, this is a problem. And yes, we are trying to, you know, overcome it. But you can see that, unfortunately, people believe based upon their will, what mm. they desire to believe. And unless you desire to actually accept God's truth, you will always have and, and hold your own opinion above God's truth. And you'll believe that what you believe to be truth is truth when, mm -hmm. it, when it, it can be demonstrated not to be. Yeah. But, but that's what you believe. And so basically you're saying in answer to Kathy's question as to why these spirits have so much untruth is that they willfully want to hold on to untruth and do not desire truth. For, for all sorts of addictive yeah. emotional reasons yeah. and facade-based reasons and also because many of them have not even heard of God, let alone yeah. want to know what God's truth yeah. is. Yeah. Many of them, all of them don't have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. and, so, and they talk about God here and God that and God this and God that and they don't have a relationship at all. They've never received any of God's love. They don't have a relationship at all. They've often received love from other spirits who are just feeding all their addictions, just like they're feeding humans' addictions. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's plenty of spirits running around in the spirit world saying, I'm God, I'm God, listen to me, yeah. you know. And none of them are God, of course, because mm -hmm. God's truth is there's only one being God and he doesn't exist within the spirit world. Yeah. He exists outside of the universe as we currently know it to be. And the universe is contained by his energy you know mm -hmm. so so the reality is that that most of them claim that they are god and yet are claiming something completely false so yes yeah, it's, it's of no surprise whatsoever that these things are happening okay Are you familiar with abraham hicks and the <laughs> teachings of the law of attraction yes of course would you say these teachings are not true as that is where a lot of the information listed above so a lot of the previous information is coming from among in many other supposedly reputable channels yes let's discuss this idea or concept of reputable channels yeah i think i've stated quite clearly in my feedback to her now yeah that most of these uh, channels are not reputable from god's perspective yeah. they are severely distorted uh, channeling from uh, from from p spirits who have no idea what the actual truth is mm -hmm. channeled through people who have no idea what the actual truth is to other people who have no idea what the actual truth is mm -hmm. <laughs> and at the end of the day none of them are interested in finding out what god's truth actually is because god's truth will confront you emotionally intellectually yeah. and otherwise and most of these people have no desire to be confronted because they wish to hold on to their current opinions. Mm -hmm. Now, all of the so-called reputable channels, including the lady who channeled Abraham, the so-called group of spirits calling themselves Abraham, um, even those groups of spirits are falsely claiming who they are. So, yeah. so you can't expect to channel accurately material from a group of spirits who are not even portraying themselves to be the people they actually are yeah like they're lying about their own identities let alone or falsely portraying their own identities let alone the material they're presenting mm -hmm. so yes I, like the so-called reputable channels that exist on earth there are none as far as i can see and mm -hmm. um, you know the, you know you've got to change your condition and I, that's why we do started well, doing channeling now with you and i because yeah. We want to demonstrate the fact is why are we channeling a whole heap of different material than every other channel is channeling 
Well, it's because we're channeling a whole different group of spirits and we're mm -hmm. actually, we actually know when we're getting lied to. We actually know when the information is false. We actually know when, when there's a problem with what's coming to us and we can do something about it. Mm -hmm. The average person on earth doesn't know any of those things because their condition is an agreement and the average channel on earth doesn't know those things for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. And so these people, like reputable uh, refers to having a reputation. These people do, I, I think. <laughs> well, they have a reputation have a because reputation they feed because the addiction of people exactly. and they sell their mediumship to others. Yeah. And people buy it. They yeah. live off people buying it. There's no yeah. donation system or gift system or anything. They buy it from yeah. them. So already that's not reputable from my yeah. perspective yeah. or God's. Yeah. But, but it is reputable from the yeah. person point of view of on earth. In mm -hmm. fact, it's more reputable than what we're doing for most yeah, people. Yeah. We, when we say we accept the gifts, everybody goes oh, about that. Yeah. But, but, but we don't charge for any mediumship. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and why do these people do it? Because they have a living they earn off of it. They yeah. get something out of it. There's a whole heap of emotional addictions that are met through it. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why they channel this particular material. And this is also the reason why, from God's perspective, they are not reputable. Yeah. And when they pass, they will find out the truth, mm -hmm. that they weren't reputable, actually. Mm -hmm. And many of these mediums, because they have taught untruth and shared untruth and spread untruth on earth, pass in a dark condition and as a result have many, many difficult emotions to work through before they come to terms with the fact that they actually channeled falsehood on earth. Yeah. Yeah. It's and also damaging to the whole channeling process because, because it's, a, it's a terrible lie to channel a whole heap of false material saying that it's true, have a whole heap of people believe it, and then those people pass and find out that it's untrue. Yeah. Right? That's a terrible lie that's being uh -huh. perpetrated upon humanity. In addition, it's also very, very damaging to the people that are on earth because they don't make an effort to find out what God's truth is after they've heard this rubbish. <laughs> and, and unfortunately... Hearing the rubbish doesn't cause them, because it appeals to their emotional condition, it appeals to their addictions, it appeals to what they want to hear, it's exactly what they want to hear in fact, then there's all this stuff that comes to the earth that's just rubbish, yeah. but, but unfortunately nobody knows it, or very few listeners know it is. And unfortunately it finishes up catching sincere people who are seeking truth. Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately also it muddies the reputation of, of true channels, of people who are channeling accurate information mm -hmm. and who know the source of that information yeah. and, who, and who know and, 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 uh, and know that it's true. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so what it does is it distorts. So this is why people like her husband think it's all a bunch of rubbish because mm -hmm. there is a whole bunch of rubbish mm -hmm. getting channeled. Mm -hmm. It is just rubbish. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, the, uh, the average person who, who uses any logic can easily see it's rubbish, yeah. right? But unfortunately, there are groups of people who just like to hear it mm -hmm. because it feeds certain emotional addictions, it feeds a certain emotional condition. They want to believe it, so they believe it. Yeah. Just like a person who believes in Christianity wants to believe it, so they believe it. A person who's a Muslim wants to believe it, so they believe it. There's a lot of pressure, family pressure, societal pressure to believe it, mm -hmm. so they believe it. It's the same in new age circles. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure to believe it, so they believe it. Mm. Uh, none of it's true. But what else can I say about it? None of it's true. Mm. And, and it, like I'm not saying this to attack the mediums. Mm -hmm. These people could channel higher spirits, but unfortunately they, have to, they will have to firstly get into a better condition of love from God's perspective, not from their own, before they'll be able to do so. Yeah, mm. yeah. Did you want to say anything um, specific about the spirits, the Abraham spirits or the medium? Well, no, that what I said applies to them yep. as well as it applies to yep. the, the spirit who channeled the Course in Miracles and yep. the spirits who channel all sorts of material like, you know, that are currently being channeled on earth today, all these so-called reputable mediums mm -hmm. who are all charging money, mm -hmm. distributing books, charging money for, for these channelings yeah. and they all you know do it without giving it as a gift yeah. and and the main reason why they do that is because they're in codependent addiction with these spirits to get the material out mm -hmm. and it's like conversations with god by neil donald walsh yeah. you know there's some truths in it there's, there's some truths in the abraham hicks stuff yeah. there's some truths in the course of miracles but it's very very hard to find 
yeah. when the, co the, the condition of the spirits and the condition of the people who are channeling it are not in good enough condition to, to know whether it's God's truth or not. Yeah. So it applies to all of these so-called mm -hmm. reputable channels. Mm -hmm. My suggestion is if a person's probably reputable, it probably means they're feeding the addictions of a large group of people. <laughs> <laughs> when you're n notorious like us, yeah, like we are. or infamous like us, yeah. then it's, uh, oh, I don't even think we're well, widely known enough to be called infamous, but you know, it's because we're not meeting people's addictions. <laughs> yeah. And not meeting the addictions of the spirits. See, yeah. the spirits have a, uh, also a vested interest in this kind of channeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, when, when, when we don't meet the addiction of the spirits, the spirits like the ones who channel to Hick, for, for Abraham and Hicks, yeah. for, the, for Hicks, yeah. for the spirits that channel the course of it, these kind of spirits don't like us mm -hmm. and, and they don't want us to say what we're saying. They don't want us to expose what the truth is. And so they are, want to attack us as well as yeah. get any person on earth to attack us. Yeah. So they have a vested interest in, in, in not hearing the truth. Yeah. Not a not an interest in actually understanding and knowing God's truth. Mm -hmm. Now, all I'm interested in is understanding and knowing God's truth, and that's why every interaction we have with spirits is based around God's truth, and every interaction we have with spirits always finishes up helping the spirits, mm -hmm. and it's very rare for us to have an interaction with spirits where the spirits share information from the spirit to us that we don't already know or aren't mm. already aware of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this one's not really phrased as a question, but I'll just say it. Yeah. I haven't seen you discuss time and the possibility that, that it does not exist in the same way as we think of here. <laughs> you, you have kind of talked about I have this. talked about this, but, but the reality is, again, the spirits who talk about the non-existence of time, all are spirits in very poor condition. Mm -hmm. The reason why time does not exist to them is because they have an everlasting, you know, they are aware that they're not going to die and therefore they're not conscious of mm -hmm. uh, anything other than what they're doing right now. They, you know, they're not trying to plan for the future because, because there's no need to plan for the future so much anymore because planning for the future is usually done by people who are afraid of the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so the, the reality is there is time does exist. Mm -hmm. And, there, and, and who knows, there may be places in the universe, um, when I say who knows, there are places in the universe where time slows down and yeah. where time speeds up. Time, time, or, yeah. time is a flexible yes. uh, concept where time can slow down and time can speed up. Yeah. And, and this is what Einstein, Einstein's theory of relativity was yeah. talking about, really. Yeah. Now, now, from God's perspective, there is no such thing as time, really, mm -hmm. because God exists outside of the universe. Mm -hmm. Now, as we approach God, we get into a condition where we're less and less and less concerned about time. And I believe eventually, the more we come to approach God, the, the more we'll, we'll finish up feeling the, that time, yeah. like it, the, that time can be examined from all times, if yes. you like. And the from time, all angles, not a specific point that we exist within it. Yes, yeah. and from God's perspective, God can touch to all time. However, mm -hmm. in this universe, time cannot be reversed. Mm -hmm. you, everything moves forward from the current position onwards. Yeah. And this is something that we must understand. In fact, a lot of chaos would be caused if mm -hmm. this was not the case mm -hmm. in the physical universe mm -hmm. and also in the spirit universe, by the way. Time does move forward. There are events that happen that were passed in time. Mm -hmm. And in the spirit world, every single spirit, can, when we speak to them, you will find that they all have, while they say, oh, well, time's different for us than here, of course it's different for them because yeah. emotionally there's no negative connotation about yeah. having a limited time. Yeah. But, but the reality is there are events that happen in the past yeah. and there are events that happen in the future. Also, we can only do a certain amount of things on earth in a certain period of time. The more progressed you become, the more you can compress into a shorter period of time. Yeah. So you're capable of doing more and taking more actions in a shorter period of time than you would be here on earth. Mm -hmm. right? And this is one reason also why spirits uh, say time is different in the spirit world, because the more you progress in the spirit world, and the more aware you become that you can accomplish a lot more in a shorter period of time. 
So it seems as if time that was there before, a time that existed before, suddenly it seems to, it appears to them that it's not the same. It's yeah, between, the limitations of time. For example, a are, celestial spirit, if I give an example. Yeah. Um, a celestial spirit, five minutes ago, might, between now and five minutes ago, might have accomplished what we accomplished in a hundred years yeah. on earth. Yeah. So from their memory's perspective, five minutes ago, they did a whole heap of things. Yeah. That that we would be remembering a hundred years ago. Yeah. Have done. Yeah. Right. So can you see straight away that because you can accomplish such a large amount of things in a short period of time, mm -hmm. you now have a different concept of time. Yeah. You, you now realize that this can be done, that can be done, this can be done, that can be done. And when you come to Earth, you feel the limitation of the slow down yeah. of how everything works. Yeah. So here, everything feels like, oh, it's really slow. And this is why spirits often do not get times right when it comes to predictions. Mm -hmm. Because from their perspective, it's going to happen just next week <laughs> or the next it, moment. It feels almost. Um, but imminent. It might, yeah. But it might be 100 years for yeah. us yeah. before that happens. Yeah. Right, and it depends on what kind of spirit is sharing that information mm -hmm. as to how far forward they can actually see. And it also depends on how the medium interprets the feeling from the spirit. Correct. The spirit has a fe the their feeling is, oh, it's just going to happen really soon. So the medium picks up this feeling, oh, it's no, going to happen soon. soon, when really it's just that they they feel that it is pretty soon, a hundred years time. <laughs> you know, for, it's well, yeah, a celestial spirit feels a hundred years time is very soon. Yeah. Um, from, from, you know, but also celestial spirit knows that in a hundred years of earth time, they can, com they can, so they can co accomplish an immense amount of tasks mm -hmm. in that time. Mm -hmm. And so you can hardly even remember if somebody says, what were you doing in the spirit world a hundred years ago? Yeah. You know, wow. You know, that there's a lot that's passed between yeah. now and a hundred years ago. Yeah. And to remember all of that requires, a, you know, a, a desire to go back to the events of the day and try to work out and remember what happened. You have a memory of it all, but, but it is so obscured by the number of events mm -hmm. that has occurred in that time yeah. that, that, you, that you almost forget what's happened unless somebody brings it up. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And um, just something else that occurred to me while you were talking about the linear, that time is... There time is, is still a, linear. Is, is, it, is linear. There's a past and there's a future. Yes. And things did happen in the past. And think the very nature of the way God's des designed the, causes the, and the effects universe. and our human soul, the, yes. the issue of there being a cause relating to a past event. Well, there's a that, lot of laws actually that, that are governed yes. by time. Yeah. The law of compensation is one. The law of cause and effect is one. The law of forgiveness, the law of repentance, even divine laws are divine, of divine love are governed by time. And it, yes, and if time wasn't linear, then the the whole working of the law it wouldn't wouldn't even work. Wouldn't gel. Yeah, but yeah. I'm quite sure that outside of the universe, mm -hmm. not that we're ever going to exist outside of no. it. No, I'm quite sure that outside of it, the concept of time may be a complete unknown. Mm -hmm. God designed mm -hmm. the laws that govern time, mm -hmm. just like God designed the laws that govern all of our existence. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so yes, spirits see time differently, but there's a whole range of reasons why they do. Yeah. And the reason why we don't talk about it much is because the majority of people who have channeled it on Earth have no understanding whatsoever as to why yeah. the, these particular spirits say, oh, our view of time is different than you and so forth. Yeah. 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 And, and to us, it's a minor issue. You are governed by time and all of God's laws are affected by time. Mm -hmm. However... It's more important to understand the laws than it is to <laughs> than to have some kind of philosophical argument about time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, I'm left in a deep state of confusion mm -hmm. over the contradictions from your teachings and the mainstream spiritual teachings. <laughs> Well, I think we've covered that subject, haven't yeah. we? Yeah. You know, I can. I think I've explained why there is a large amount of conf con there's a large amount of difference between our teachings and so-called mainstream teachings. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, Kathy, um, there is no need for you to be confused. It's because of the condition of the people channeling those mainstream teachings. Mm. It's very simple. Well, she goes on to say <coughs> to pose a question then. I'd just as soon go straight to God for the answers. I agree. As you have suggested. <laughs> yes. But I've been praying for help for a while now and I can't feel anything. Yeah. I ask him to show me the errors within so that I may address the causes emotionally. 
I know you. S- do you want me to keep going? Or you no, no. Yep. I know you said that if I don't feel anything, this is because I don't want the truth. But I feel like I sincerely and desperately do want the truth. How can I overcome this? Um, there's there's an emotion governing you with regard to your desire for truth, and it's fear at this point. So fear is governing your desire for truth. And I notice this occurring in a lot of people, particularly when we first meet them. Yeah. Fear is the primary motivator for them to want to know some more truth. Now, that doesn't work with God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> fear should not be your primary motivator for discovering truth. Um, love, the desire to love, should be your primary motivator, firstly. Mm-hmm. Secondly, um, The main reason why you're not able to receive God's love at this point of view is because you're shutting down the flow of emotion. And and this is a main this is a main problem that humanity faces. Mm. There is a lack of faith in God, a lack of will, and also a lack of wanting to feel emotion. Mm -hmm. Right. And these three points, which we covered in the assistance group in Cornelius when he gave the talk about what are the main blockages people have you will find that these are the blockages that the majority of people have that take time to get over. Mm. Opening yourself to God's love for most people is a scary possibility. You need to firstly examine your belief systems about God. Now, remember that you've had none or very little belief systems about Mm. God established. Mm -hmm. So you're going to need to treat your relationship with God in a discovery process, it's going to, how, how would you fall in love with your husband? Or how would you, fall, you know, how, how did you get to be in love with somebody? You, you wanted to discover their nature, discover their personality. These are the things you take to God. The other thing, Mary in the assistance group covered a lot of material about how to, um, you know, develop this desire to, mm. to truly know God and to also desire to receive truth and so forth. So, so my suggestion is to go through that material, the assistance group material. And I don't know if you already have, but, but, if, but it feels to me like if you have, you haven't understood it well mm. enough yet. And I, so I would go through it again mm-hmm. and, and pray about it as you're going through it. The key thing is that while we resist God's love, we are not easily going to understand divine truth. So most of what I teach will be like mumbo jumbo to you unless you receive God's love. Yeah. You'll be confused a lot until mm. you receive God's love. Once you receive God's love, every the clarity comes then. So focus your attention on the reception of God's love, which means opening your heart to the reception of it. Mm-hmm. And this is where the majority of people are struggling. They don't want to open their heart to the reception of God's love. They are afraid that of the changes that it's going to force into their life that they do not wish to embrace and they still want their addictions met Mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. And this is a big problem in the USA. Mm -hmm. Addictions are king Mm -hmm. in most Western countries, and and God is not interested in meeting your addictions. So you're going to have to address your addictions if you really want to receive God's love. So there are many things that are are inhibiting um, Kathy from receiving God's love at this point in time. Be patient, Kathy. It's not, it's going to require your true sincere development of a desire, a passionate desire within you to receive God's love. And it's going to require a lot of desire for truth. And it's got to also require you feeling some emotions that at this stage, you're very against emotionally feeling. Mm. And your surroundings are also very against emotionally feeling. So, So it's going to take some time to get yourself into this state of developing your will to feel. Yeah, she goes on, and this is a slightly different take on a similar question. Yep. If intellectually I'm 100% focused on obtaining God's love and truth and correcting and repenting for all my sins, how can I get my emotional self or soul to join me? Firstly, you cannot understand God's truth intellectually. Mm. Secondly, you cannot repent intellectually. You cannot engage the law of compensation intellectually. You cannot do anything, in fact, on this path intellectually. <laughs> she's saying she's <laughs> focusing her intellect on those things Correct. 100%. So, so, so while you are focusing your intellect on those things, which I'm suggesting that you continue to do, yeah. the reality is unless the emotional state is truly acknowledged and engaged, mm. and unless you can truly acknowledge emotionally 
the process of sin mm. and acknowledge emotionally your addictions and acknowledge emotionally how much you want them, no real change will occur. So, so you can intellectually convince yourself, and there's many who have listened to us mm -hmm. who have intellectually convinced themselves that change is occurring when nothing has actually happened. And this is the tricky thing. Mm -hmm. I'm explaining a whole heap of words to you. Mm -hmm. Your intellect processes these words. And, and unless, but, uh, but unless you can feel, none of these words are really going to make any sense at the soul level to you. Mm. This requires you feeling and able to feel God's love. Now, the fastest way is to allow yourself firstly to work on all the things that are impediments to you feeling God's love. Yeah. Once you work on those impediments, you'll begin to feel some of God's love. Mm -hmm. Once you start feeling some of God's love, you will then accept the truths. Truth comes after you have released the error yeah. and you are not releasing the error. You are wanting to imbibe truth without letting go of the error first. Mm. And, and this is where most people get very afraid. They're afraid to let go of what they think they know. Mm -hmm and what they think they feel, and so forth. And because they're afraid to let it go, they don't let it go. Mm -hmm. And then God's truth cannot enter them because a, a, a law governing the way the soul operates is this law based on preclusion. You, you can't have the two things that are opposite each other in the same location. So, so anything inside of you that opposes the flow of God's love into you must first be released in order for God's love to flow. And, and what I'm suggesting to you is you're opposed to releasing the things that emotionally opposed to releasing mm -hmm. the things, the error emotionally, mm -hmm. opposed to releasing the error emotionally yeah. as a process, yeah. an emotional experience. And as a result of that, your emotions oppose the reception of truth. Mm. So while you can accept some of the truths we're discussing intellectually, there's still the soul rejecting those truths until the soul gets into a state of acceptance. Now, can I give her an illustration of that where it's actually happened? Mm -hmm. God has been trying to share with her the truth about the abortions yeah. or, or ever since, since she had one. Yeah. Now, it's taken many years since she had one mm -hmm. until she started to accept the truth. Mm -hmm. And that required her releasing some of the error-based beliefs that would cause her, including the error-based beliefs about God, mm -hmm. error-based beliefs about religion and so forth that caused her to believe only in science, mm -hmm. error-based beliefs in spirituality that caused her now to investigate spiritual matters, error-based beliefs in uh, of, of her own ability to process emotion even. Mm -hmm. She had to release some of those error-based beliefs emotionally before she could accept that abortion was a sin yeah. even. Yeah. Eventually, she got to accept it. Mm -hmm because the truth could now enter her emotionally. Yeah. Once she accepted it, now she can start processing through repentance mm -hmm. and desiring God's forgiveness, which she is now doing. So she's already doing in, in that regard, yeah. with regard to abortion. She needs to do that in other aspects of her life. Yeah. And, and, and it's the same process as what she's done with the abortion issue. Yeah. Exactly the same process, but it has to be engaged emotionally. Yeah. Now, you and I have done a number of interviews about emotions. Yes. So there's a playlist about emotions and feelings, isn't there? Yes. Then there's also about how the human soul uh, operates, operates, how it actually works. And you've referenced that, so I'll put links to that in there. Yep. And in our very first assistance group, we are going to talk about facing the fear of being emotionally overwhelmed yes. and making changes. So, yes. So, so all there's a of lot those, of material coming yes. up that will help her yeah. to be able to address this particular issue. Yeah. It is a problem. And the majority of people on the earth have the problem. Yes. And the main reason why is because the majority of people on the earth have been taught to be very selective emotionally. They only want to accept particularly emotions that feel nice mm -hmm. and they want to reject anything that feels not very nice. And there's going to be a lot of things you need to feel when you're in disharmony with God's love and truth that are not nice. Yeah. And the majority of people can't cope with that. I had a person email me the other day, somebody who's known about divine truth for many years, and he's had his very first big emotional experience that lasted a few hours of crying and he was beside himself crying and so forth. And he, and he emailed me distressed about the fact that it, that it happened. I've had, I've had days of four or five hours like that for, for nearly 12 years or whatever it is. <laughs> so I'm not scared of that kind of emotional experience. But the average person on the planet is. Yeah, and when, and when you said the average person on the planet can't cope with that, 
I just want to say, no, the average person on the planet can cope with that. Yes, but what I mean is they believe they, they can't. can't cope exactly. With it. They, they shut it down immediately. I only correct it because I yeah. know that for for a long time I used to tell myself that, that untruth, you won't be able to cope. That I can't, I can't cope, I can't yeah. cope. When the truth is I can, I'm yeah. just afraid about that emotionally overwhelming experience. Afraid of getting judged, afraid of the experience yourself, of judging yourself. Yeah. There's yeah. all sorts of things yeah. you do when you start going through that kind of experience. Yeah. You're worried that you're going crazy. You, worry, yeah. all you sorts can't of control worries. all the other things that you want to control in your life. It, exactly. And this is the main reason why the majority of people make very little progress on the earth with regard to God's love. Yeah. You see, in the spirit world, again, we're not so worried about what everybody thinks. Mm. So, so generally, we observe other people, you know, doing similar things, and so then we worry less, and then, and then we go ahead with doing things that we wouldn't contemplate on earth. Yeah. My suggestion to you is stop worrying about how it's going to look and how it's going to feel and how, how distressed you're going to be and yeah. how hard it might be and so forth and all these other things and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when you do it, the fears will come up naturally mm -hmm. and you'll be able to process through them and release them. And as you release each new fear, which is a false expectation appearing real, mm -hmm. you will absorb some truth from God. And, yeah. and then, you, then obviously you'll also be able to be in a position of, of feeling God's love more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. All right. Current mainstream spiritual teachings all point to big upcoming changes and that energies are incoming to change the hearts and minds of all and make us aware of the spirit world and truth. Is there any truth to this and is this why you are here now? Yes, there is a truth to this, and yes, we, my, myself, and the fourteen others, that, uh, the thirteen others that came, have all come particularly for this purpose. And the main reason why spirits in the spirit world are talking about it is because they've all been told that it's happening. <laughs> of course, they don't recognise me as the source of it because I disagree with their teachings. Yeah. And so for many of them, there's confusion. Mm -hmm. They know that, that this is bound to happen. They think it's through somebody agreeing with their beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they do not support us doing it. Mm -hmm. but, and in fact, many times oppose us doing it. But even through the opposition, God will accomplish what God intends to do. And, and, uh, and in the end, I feel that God's truth will reach the planet if we stay on the course that we came to, 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 to follow. Yeah. Okay. And most of these spirits have no idea that we are the people that are, that are, that are going to be doing it. Mm. No, no, most of the spirits have no concept of that. And the reason why is because our belief systems, well, God's truth, mm -hmm. disagrees completely with their belief systems. And they be think that a person who's going to come and change the planet should agree with their belief systems. Yeah. And that's why they do not support the people, the very people that they're talking about, that they're prophesying about, yeah. have actually already come yeah. and they don't support them. Yeah. And that's the reason why. Mm. Okay. Final question. Have there been any additional people who have reincarnated after you and the other 13 came? Not to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, at this stage, I don't believe there is because they're all waiting to see the results of our experiment <laughs> <laughs> and seeing what the outcomes may be. I do feel, though, that in the future, some of the people who have been aborted and miscarried who reach the condition of at one with God and at one with their soul mm. mate, so in, into a soul union state, I, I do believe that many of those, particularly if both halves um, had that misfortune, that they may attempt to, mm. uh, to come back to Earth and return so that they can have the earth experience again. But it's not going to be anything like the experience they would have had anyway. Yeah. So, so there is really no need for any person in that condition to return to earth. Mm. The only reason why we did is because we noticed that the earth itself wasn't embracing the principles of God's truth and that it needed mm. some more. And as soon as we worked out how to return, we decided that we desired to return to assist that process to occur because the earth needs to know the truth and it will greatly affect the positive, have a beautiful positive outcome if people accept it. Yeah. And, and that's why we decided to come. Yeah. But, uh, but there is really not, that motivation does not exist for other people to come. Mm. And that's one reason why I feel quite strongly that it's probably highly unlikely anybody will come. Yeah. Uh, aside from the people who came 
at the 14 people who did come. Do, have you had the feeling in the past that there were others? I can't remember. I had the suspicion that there were others thinking about it, yeah. but, but not who were in the condition who were thinking about it. I see. Yeah. So, so the feeling I have is that there are spirits in the spirit world currently who know now how to return to earth, well, not who, who currently yeah. believe that they would like to return to earth and yeah. are not yet in the condition to return to earth. However, once they reach the condition of a soul union, I feel it's highly unlikely they will desire to return to earth. Yeah. And it's highly unlikely that desire will remain. Yeah. Yes. So, so at this stage, my feeling is, yes, there's, a, there's quite a lot of spirits who feel they would like to return to earth. Uh, and I'm not talking about spirits who try to reincarnate using the yeah. terminology of it, but I'm talking about spirits who have developed enough in love to understand the truth about it. Um, but unfortunately, they st yet do not realise that once they reach the condition of being able to come, that their own motivation for coming might have disappeared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Great. Well, and Cathy finishes with much thanks and love to you both. It's our pleasure, Cathy. Mm. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's lovely to be able to answer your questions. Uh, these are the questions that a lot of people who are new to Divine Truth ask. Yeah. And so that's why we've included this as a feedback yeah. session. Yeah. And, uh, and, and we hope that we can address many of the issues in a more succinct way once we begin a whole series of FAQs on, on different subjects such as these. Yeah. yeah. Of course, we're really busy now with assistance groups for the, yes. for really a couple of years. Yes. Hopefully within those couple of years, we'll start some FAQ series. But we're going to be producing a large body of work that's really focused on helping people really with one of those questions that Cathy had about how she shifts from this intellectual feeling she'd like to exactly. do this to having an emotion, a soul-based desire to do it. Because that is the key. It is. Like, like whatever we present as true, you will not accept intellectually unless it, when you've got an emotional condition inside of yourself that opposes the acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so it's the key part is getting God's love into the soul exactly. and, and doing everything you possibly can yeah. to get God's love into your soul first. And then once God's love enters your soul, God's truth will enter your soul. And God's truth is, is universally unchangeable. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you receive God's love, you will receive the same truth that I've received yeah. and you will know it to be true then. It sort of simplifies the whole it thing, does. doesn't it? And it does. so if we can help people make that shift, yes. then they'd ask, they'll ask us far more sort of, of these kind of questions because a lot of them will be answered even just through receiving God's love consistently. Yes, and these kind of questions, which are driven a lot by some fears that people have, yep. um, generally disappear once you start focusing on the reception of God's love mm -hmm. and the reception of God's truth. That being said, truth is always going to have a fascination for humankind and m new truth is always going to have a fascination. But there, there is also an issue there. We cannot receive new truth when our soul is in opposition to it. Mm -hmm. And we also cannot receive and understand God's truth unless we've received some of God's love first. Yeah. And so this is why receiving God's love is such a key part of our development emotionally and, and our development for our future. Mm -hmm. And so my suggestion is focus on receiving God's love as your primary objective. Answering these questions, many of these questions will easily be answered as you receive and have a personal experience. That's what's happened for me. By the time I passed in the first century, I understood how the spirit world worked. I understood mm. why all these spirits were affecting the earth. I understood you know, why there were influences occurring and what the influences were occurring through and the attractions that were occurring. And I could see the colours that were involved and what those colours meant. And, you know, all those particular things can easily be seen the more that you, the more that you feel, the more that you embrace, you know, God's love and, and actually progress in that regard. So what I said in the first century applies, and that is seek first God's love. And then all these other things will be added to you. All this truth will come to you mm -hmm. and you'll understand it far better than you can now just with an intellectual understanding. Yeah. So, so I see a lot of people still trying to get an intellectual understanding and still being argumentative even with that, which is emotional really. There, yeah. there's, our argumentative spirit is emotionally based. We've mm -hmm. got something in our soul opposing our ability to accept God's truth in that location. Yeah. And and instead of dealing with that emotion, it causes yeah. them to argue and to, you know, philosophize and so forth. They try to understand, try to understand intellectually, but you can't. Yeah. And this is why it's a narrow path. Mm. It's a narrow path because the majority of people 
don't know and uh, they don't understand how to give up their intellect and focus on their emotional development. Yeah. And in particular, they don't uh, are unable to receive God's love because of their current emotional condition. Mm. So, mm. so the 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 really important thing is to focus firstly on on your relationship with God, and that's why. With the um, assistance groups, we will be focusing on primarily on that. Yeah. You know, a lot of these questions that you've asked, Kathy, have been answered in the past, and many of the people who have been heard us for years and years and years would probably be able to ream off the answer that I'd yeah. possibly give. However, they have not personally experienced it, yeah. and they don't really know. And it's only when you personally experience something that you really will know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Thanks for your time, darling. Yeah, it was, no, it's it been good. a pleasure. And and th- I enjoyed answering some of those questions because um, it's lovely to sometimes answer the questions of a new person who's not yeah. so, and also a person who's not um, like the last few feedback sessions we give, where the where the people yeah. asking the questions really have strongly held opinions <laughs> and they basically just want to argue. Yeah. So so it's lovely that you're more open, Kathy, to yeah. actually receiving some truth and not being argumentative in the way that you propose these questions. And and so this. This is one of the reasons why we wanted to answer them. Yeah. 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 <laughs>